was a snippet of the last game at the bowling on the 10th of May 2016. Uh, my daughter and I, along with 35,000 other fans, were singing this to our hero. And he was a hero, Dimitri Payet. I won't lie, there was a lump in my throat and a tear in most uh, fans' eyes on that night uh, when we were singing this and when we were singing the bubble song as well. Uh, there was so much passion and intensity on the night. We were watching a master at work and it really did mean something to, to all the fans. Um, I think it was probably the loudest I'd heard the Pirate song being sung on that night. But can you ever imagine singing this to Dimitri Pyatt ever again? Yep, the inevitable has happened. Welcome to Irons United for another window transfer special, or transfer window special I should say. Um, and uh, I'm going to focus a little bit on Dimitri Payet. Apparently, Marseille are in financial difficulties and they're looking to offload uh, a number of their players. Deja vu? Well, you bet, because this is how we managed to acquire Dimitri Payet in the first place. Uh, when Marseille needed to sell and we snapped him up for £10 million. Um, so he joined us way back in 2015 uh, and immediately became Mil uh, Slavin Bilic's main man and he became the new talisman for the fans. In his first season, he scored nine goals and assisted in 12. Uh, his free kick taking was quality and we loved to see the way he took the, the game to the opposition. And it was the opposition that had to worry about him him, and be more wary about him than us being cautious about uh, who we were playing. Um, so a, a great first season and what was there not to like about, about this player? Um, but of course, um, with West Ham, nothing really lasts forever. Um, in the 2016 season, uh, we were looking forward to a new era. A new stadium, the, the arrival of a, a number of new players, uh, but it was evident that there was something not uh, not going well with Payet in the background. Some say it's because he was unhappy with the false promises uh, made to him uh, about strengthening strengthening the squad. Um, yes, we did sign a lot of players, uh, but most were really mediocre players. Players like Faguli, Nordvite. Torre, Zasa, Caleri, Fletcher, I mean, the list was endless. Um, some say it's because Pyatt became arrogant and thought he was too good for West Ham after a successful return to the French national team where they finished runners-up uh, for Portu uh, to Portugal in the European Champions finals. Maybe he thought he was too big for West Ham. But the irony was that it was West Ham that gave him the platform to demonstrate his ability again. Uh, which is why he got a recall to the national team in the first place. And then others say it was about personal reasons, and, you know, I'm not going to go into those, but apparently there were a lot of personal reasons uh, for, for Pyatt wanting to leave West Ham. But whatever the truth was, um, it was evidence that uh, Pyatt uh, uh, wanted to leave. You know, it could have been a combination of all these uh, issues. We don't know. Um, so by the end of the tra January transfer window... Pyatt was gone, sold back to Marseille for £25 million, a healthy profit of £15 million to the club. And it was clearly the beginning of the end for, for Slavin Bilic. I mean, you know, the way he loved Pyatt, um, you know, it was clear that to him that Pyatt leaving was such a, su had such an impact on him, which resulted in a way of having a massive impact on the team itself, because we'd never looked the same without him. Um... So after a season and a half, you know, uh, he left us, you know, he, he, the first half of the season uh, uh, that he, in, in his final season with us, he was, he was doing okay. He, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he took, he took a couple of games uh, by the horns and, you know, showed us what he was capable of, but it clear, it was clear he, um, his heart wasn't in it anymore. So he moved back to Marseille. And in the half season, first season that he was there, he picked up where he left off at West Ham. He scored four goals and assisted in three. Um, but then in the past couple of seasons, the last two, couple of seasons at uh, Marseille, he scored 10 goals and assisted in 19. So there's still a lot of talent there with Dimitri Payet. It's so evident. 
So what now? We know he's got talent, uh, but we're also aware of the acrimonious way he left West Ham, um, leaving a very bitter taste in the mouths of, of, uh, amongst the fan base. Um, we seem to be forever victims of uh, player power at West Ham. I'm sure it goes on elsewhere, but it, it kind of feels like it happens to us all the time, uh, where players just don't seem to believe in the contracts that they sign for us. Um, you know, we had Pyatt, Sacco and Artovich and now even possibly Lanzini. So if we got him back, what message would it send to, to the fans, to the club? Uh, you know, after after what happened, the history with him. Uh, but then at 32 years of age, you know, he's possibly, his best is possibly past him. Uh, so is is he even worth looking at? Is he even worth getting back? And how, how, as I said, how will the fans react towards him? Um, but, you know, if he was available for, say, 10 million, would it be a wise acquisition? I don't know. Um, to be honest, sometimes it's better not to look back uh, and to look forward by bringing in younger players, hungrier players at a similar sort of price range. Um, at Irons United, we've already made videos of quite a number of attacking midfielders who have been linked to West Ham or rumours to have been linked to West Ham. You know, so for the same amount of money, we could be looking at the likes of Fortunis uh, or the young, talented Alexis Claude Maurice, and so on. So look at look at our um, other videos on the on these players that we've already discussed. So, as much as I loved Pyatt the first time around, I don't think we um, there would be anywhere near as much love for him the second time, should the opportunity arise. But let me say, you know, this is pure speculation. It's like Social media putting two and two together and coming up with five again, because no one's really mentioned uh, Pyatt as a as a um, as a real prospect signing. You know, it's just that you know Marseille are in trouble with money. Uh, they're looking to offload players. Pyatt has played for us before, and so the social media uh, rigmarole is saying, "Oh yeah, well, there's an obvious link." And and I actually don't think there is a link, and I don't think. Husalos or pa or Pellegrini are even remotely looking at Dimitri Payet. I could be wrong. Who knows? But uh, let's move on. Let's move on to some other uh, prospect signings. So having spoken in length about uh, an awful lot of attacking midfielders over the past few weeks on Irons United, uh, the one thing that everyone seems to have missed out on is the fact that Pellegrini is looking for another defensive-minded midfielder. You know... Um, there's so much talk about attack-minded midfielders and I've no doubt that if a decent player was available and was right for West Ham, we'd probably go for him. But uh, who's he lost need? Uh, Pellegrini needs to shore up that defence, that midfield defensive play. And uh, Q, uh, another player that uh, we've just been linked to is Stanislas Lobotka. Um, he's apparently the next uh, Luka Modric, according to many pundits. Um, and if you look at him and the way he plays, you can understand why those comparisons have been made. Lobotka currently plays for Celta Vigo. Sound familiar? Yep. He plays for the same team uh, as Maxi Comis does, uh, who we've been linked to for forever, it seems. Um, so, Lobotka is a 24-year-old Slovak international with excellent close control of the ball. He's not a box-to-box -box midfielder, but he because he operates more from his own half, just in front of the the, the back the back line, um, where his primary skill is to break up uh, um, any any attack. Um, he he's very very good at carrying the ball out and very good at laying the ball off to the attack-minded midfielders um, to to move forward into the final third of the pitch. Um, He's incredibly comfortable on the ball. I mean, if you look at the way he plays, his close control, you know, he's got a lot of confidence for a defensive-minded midfielder. He's not the sort of player that will just get it and then boot it away. He will, you know, he'll beat one or two players and then look to lay the ball off to to some to uh, the attack line where it can it could hopefully do more damage. Um, he's stocky, five foot six, you know, so he's got a low sense of gravity. Um, and as I said, very difficult to shrug off the, the ball. So he plays in a similar role to Declan Rice, but he's com got completely different skills to Declan Rice. Um, so I don't think he'd be, um, it'd be either him or Rice playing. I think the two of them to combined would, would, would 
be a very, very interesting proposition for West Ham. Um, it looks it looks it could be could be like a really ideal partnership so you've got your flat back four you have someone like Lobotka and Rice as holding midfielders uh, and then you've got the the you know the rest of the players to do their thing out in attack you know so kind of frees up the likes of uh, Anderson and Antonio and any other midfielder Lanzini or any other midfielder attacking midfielder that will be playing it frees them up to do the things that they're there to do which is to attack the opposition so um, it could be interesting. Um, it, it would be an interesting uh, signing if, 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 if this rumour was to happen. You know, uh, it's being said that West Ham are, are rumoured to be looking now at a double deal of around about £50 million for both Gomez and Lobotka. Uh, so given that Lope Gomez is, is valued at around about 35 mil, we have to believe that Lobotka is available for around 15 to be honest, I'm not sure how accurate this is because he looks like he's a player worthy of being available for, uh, uh, should be sold for a lot more. Uh, but if a joint deal is in the offing, uh, both he and Gomez are players that would absolutely, most definitely elevate West Ham to the next level without a doubt. Um, we've already done a show on Gomez as well, so look in our back catalogue as well for that one in Irons United video, videos to see what we think of Gomez. Do I believe the deal is possible? Well, I'd like to think so. Perhaps the lure of 50 million could really tempt Celta Vigo to sell. Uh, plus, if the likes of Aston Villa are interested in Gomez, no disrespect to you, Aston Villa, but if the likes of Aston Villa are interested in Gomez, then surely West Ham stand a very, very good chance of securing his services. No? Right, let's go back to more attacking midfielders and, and playmakers. The next player to be um, uh, linked to us is Joanne Jordan, a Spanish player who currently plays for Eibar in La Liga. Jordan started his professional career at uh, Espanyol, but rarely played for that team. He went on loan to Segundo Division League team Real Valladolid. Yeah, my pronunciations are shit, but there you go. He went to Valladolid for a loan spell for a year and then signed to his current club, Abar, on a three-year deal. Um, this is really where his uh, career went into the next level. In the 2017-18 season, he scored six goals and assisted in four. Um, so he's certainly important to Abar. Um, but he's, he's been playing for a team that one would say is the equivalent to, say, Watford, Bournemouth. Um, so it's a mid-table team, um, you know, and, and yes, he's an important player for them. But would a player from, from, from a team like that really enhance West Ham? As we know, the Premier League can be a lot more demanding. So I'm just really uncertain about this link. Um, I'm uncertain how it's come about. Um, and I'm not really sure that it's got a lot of mileage. Um, I, I could be doing it a disservice. What do I know? I'm not in the know. I'm just sort of saying what I what I see on uh, social media, what I see is being rumoured from other links that we have uh, at Irons United, and we we put the show out there for you. So I'm I don't think this one's a goer, uh, to be quite honest. On to the next player, Juan Cuadrado. Yes, the same Juan Cuadrado who was in a mighty flop at Chelsea a few seasons ago. Um, he's been at Juventus since 2015 season, and to be honest. He hasn't exactly sold the world, set the world on fire with his stats. In 97 league games over four seasons, he scored 11 goals and assisted in 19. You know, not great stats by any stretch of the imagination, to be honest. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because I really don't think this is a goer. Cuadrado is 31 years of age. Juventus are obviously looking to strengthen their, their uh, squad. You know, they're interested in Champions League, going to the next level. You know, at 31, Cuadrado, yeah, if they can sell him to someone, they'll do so. You know, and I hope we're not mugs to sort of pick up on a player like that because uh, we should be looking at sort of pushing to Europe. We're not looking at Champions League, I know, but we're we should be looking at uh, trying to at least secure seventh spot or at least fight for sixth spot if we can. The teams above us, you know, some teams are going to suffer next season for one reason or another. So uh, there's no, you know, if we strengthen in the right way, then there's no reason why we can't uh, attract the right players uh, and, and, and move on. 
So I don't think Quadrado is uh, even remotely uh, uh, um, a, a, a transfer option for us. And finally, social media has gone into overdrive because of Declan Rice's twi Twitter message to uh, Mason Mount. <sighs> Let's be honest. You know, it was a tweet and how fans can remotely think that this might lead to a transfer from Chelsea to West Ham for this uh, talented youngster is is a bit beyond me. You know, th there's no denying Mason Mount is a talented English player uh, with a very, very bright future ahead of him. In the 2017-18 season, he went out on loan to Vitesse, scoring 14 goals and assisting in nine Last season, he was out on loan to Derby County, where under Frank Lampard's management, he led Derby to a whisker of winning promotion back into the Premier League, only to be pipped by Aston Villa in the Championship uh, playoff finals. He scored 11 goals for them and assisted in five. So yeah, absolutely. I would love him to uh, come to West Ham. Maybe a loan signing? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I think with uh, Chelsea's predicament uh, next season, where they have a ban in place uh, for transfers right up to 2020. Um, I don't, th and, and also with the departure of players like Eden Hazard, I think uh, Chelsea are going to be looking at trying to strengthen, obviously strengthen from within. And the obvious is to look at their youngsters and see who's going to be able to fill some gaps. Um, so it's possible mounts will be much more valuable to Chelsea than rather than loading him out. Or even selling him. So I can't see this happening. Um, but again, who knows? Football's a funny world. Money talks and, uh, you, you know, anything could happen. Anyway, that's another roundup of transfer gossip. It goes on and on and on. And I hope we're not boring you with it. Um, I just hope we're giving you some indication as to what's going on out there. What the gossip is and uh, what might be in the offing. Uh, so subscribe to Irons United, uh, give us your views, you know, uh, leave, leave your comments, tell us what you think. If we're all talking bollocks, say so. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more, let us know. Again, as I said in, my la in some of the other shows, if there are players that you're aware of that we're not talking about, tell us and uh, we'll, we'll look into them for you. Um, thanks for watching and uh, have a pleasant rest of Sunday afternoon.